members and coordinators of the Sunlight Gospel Association, leaders and delegates of the following countries. As I name these countries, representatives of these respective countries may just rise and wave your hand as a center of recognition. You may say, praise the Lord. Representatives and leaders of the United States of America, kindly wave your hands and say, praise the Lord. Kindly stand. Those from America. Hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. Representative from Switzerland, kindly stand and wave your hand and praise the Lord. Well, I understand that some of the delegates has already left. May God bless them. Representative of the Shvet Republic, please stand. God bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah. Representative of Germany, please stand. May God bless them. Representative of Nigeria, please stand. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Representative of uh, Kenya, please stand. <laughs> Representative of India, God bless you. Representative of Slovakia, God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Of the distinguished guests, sisters and brother, it is my deepest joy for on the behalf of Jamaica and all Jamaican in extending to you this hearty, warm and deep welcome to this blessed little island of ours. Uh, we start with um, chapter 18 and um, verse 4. And I heard, uh, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. To this point in history, the church was still mixed up with Babylon. At least some of the people of God were still in the Babylonish system. If you go for a context, you go up to verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Praise God. Now, it says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of of her delicacies. Now, you need to wonder and to be sure in your heart what God is talking about. 
What is this Babylon? Let's go back to chapter 17. And you notice he called, he called Babylon her. Her. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Use, listen to the strong language which God is using. He's calling this, whoever it is, a great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Thus, you realize he's not speaking about an individual because the, 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 the situation about sitting on many waters, an individual could not do that. So, he carried me away in the spirit. Now, he's going to show me a picture of something in the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Let's just see if we can identify the beast before we go any further. If you turn your Bibles back to Revelation 12. He speaks of, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. That means in the kingdom of God. Not the invisible heaven, but in the visible kingdom of God. A woman clothed with the sun and, her, and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now that is a mighty wonderful picture. There is this woman who is, has the glory of God for her clothing. That is, she is clothed with the glory. We sing that, that, that the glory of God should cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Well, when you sing that song, you should know that you are asking God to cover you with his glory like a garment as how the waters cover the sea. That the woman who is here is a church and she, this church, that God is saying that a church has come as close to perfection as she could be because she's covered with the glory of God. She has a crown of 12 stars on her head. The apostolic authority, you know, the crown is the authority. She has the apostolic authority upon her head. And she being with child, she's pregnant with another church. That is, she, God, has never been pleased with the woman church. For the woman church has been barren. She has not been able to bring forth a perfect child. That is, only Jesus Christ has been perfect. And God is waiting, waiting for 6,000 years to see a church come forth with the glory of God in the fullness of God. But the woman church didn't please him. So he gave her a child. And she's going to bring forth a man-child church which will please God. Now, we read a little further. And she traveled in birth and pain to be delivered. It is not an easy thing that we are going, going through the tribulation. And we are going to go through worse than we are today. All that we have seen the church suffer in past times, we are going to really be the worst sufferers yet. The Chinese church was crucified. They killed some of them. They put watchmen in prison. They, they did all manner of things. They crippled the, the, the ministers, put their hands in rocks and turn it and screw it till they broke all their fingers. They sent them back into the congregation, all crooked up 
and, and broken up. And they said, this is what your God is doing for you. And so they have done this. The Chinese church has been done as wickedly as the Catholic church. The Catholic church, if you read the book of martyrs, you will see the martyrdom that the Catholic church has brought upon the, pe the world. How the suffering was so great. They killed millions and millions of Christians. That was in the past. But this now is even going to be worse than anything we have seen in the past. And this is what God is saying. This woman is travailing. Therefore, the man-child church, the powerful church, coming forth in the, pardon me, the image of Jesus Christ, that church will be brought forth in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of suffering. We, we come to a, a, um, a seminar and we have, you know, expended a lot of effort to be here. And God is blessing us. But we are still having three meals a day. The day is coming when you will be fortunate if you get one. Yet God is going to require greater things from that church than from any other church. So here we are. The, we look at the, the situation. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Now you are talking about hell in heaven. This, that this heaven could not be God's invisible perfect realm. It is an imperfect heaven that has a devil in it. And that's where we are. Amen. That's where we are. The, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his heads. Now, heads mean organization in Bible. It means seven organizations, could be seven churches, could be the seven churches of Asia, which turned against Paul. They had to turn against Paul because they became carnal. So the seven churches, seven heads, and ten horns, they are going to have ten pastors, bishops, rulers, popes, whatever you call them. And this is what we read of in Revelation 18. Let's go back to Revelation 18. Yes. Um, where did we have the red dragon? Oh, it was 17? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We were at 17. Good. 17. So then, the woman was riding this red dragon. Now, brethren, if you search your Bible well, if you study well, you will realize that when the Bible says woman, most of the time it's talking about a church. So here we see a church on the other side with the glory of God. Another church on this side riding the dragon. The world church riding the dragon. And when you talk about riding, she had the appearance of steering the dragon. See, steering the dragon. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go on. He carried me away, and a woman sit upon a colored dragon. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, 
and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of fornication. Now, how does a church commit fornication? How does a church commit fornication? Other gods mixing, mixing the gospel of Jesus Christ with other gospels. Not only man-made, but satanic. You see, the, the, the Bible says doctrines of devils. So, at, at the church has become a fornicator, an adulterer, and, you know, it, 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 let me just touch a little bit. Uh, when the early church came forth with the purity of the gospel, um, soon after that, the early church was taken over by the Roman Catholic Church. You know how the Roman Catholic Church started? Hallelujah. It started, it started with um, Constantine going into battle with an inferior force going against the Roman army. And he um, saw in the sky a symbol of a cross. He said he saw the cross in the sky. And he stopped and he made a cross for every one of his soldiers. And all his soldiers began to wear the cross and they had a superstition that if they were dying and they would call upon the name of Jesus, they would be saved. And so they went into battle in Hak Sido. By this we conquer. And so they went into battle to fight with, the, with an inferior force against a superior force, and they overcame them. And he became, you would have to say, the first pope. He, he proclaimed everybody Christian, and from there onward, the church was taken over by this Catholic church, the, what we call the Roman Catholic Church. And it so happened that they started appointing bishops, and they called the bishop popes. You know, the word popes is papa. It's papa. It's the great father. And if you call him a pope, then you are calling him the great father. You are speaking a word of blasphemy against God. Alaba. God said, call no man father, Amen. for God is your father. And if you call him Pope, you are calling him father. So God said that this thing would have the names of blasphemy on her forehead. Do you know what God means by forehead? It means your mind. That in the mind, in the being of your, you, 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 there is this mark, this mark of blasphemy. And so today we are going to go into some of the names of blasphemy. And when I forget some of it, you're going to remind me, right? Amen. Amen. And so we look here at... Um, she was decked with all manner of gold, precious stones, pearls. Amen. Look at Revelation 3. Mm -hmm. And I, let me show you the church. Revelation 3. And around the end of it, it says, sorry, um, I look at two. Okay. I counsel thee, verse 18, 
he was speaking of the church of Laodicea. That's the last church. That's the church age in which we are at this time. And he said, because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayst be rich and white raiment that thou mayst be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve and thou mayst see as many as I love I rebuke and chase now if we are in the age of the Laodicean age if we are in the Laodicean age that means we are in the last church age and this church age has really come to an end but God still wants us to flee out of this dead thing you flee with your mind you don't flee with your feet you don't come out of this thing with your feet in my, I have known many people who have come out of the church and they come out with the stain of the church and they bring this filthy thing into the body of Christ meeting I wonder if you understand oh, yeah. you, you, you bring the, the, the thing out from where you come out of the church that God tell you to come out of and you thought it was when you come out from under the bishop that you had come out of it but you come out of it and you intend to be a bishop yourself you see if, 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 if we don't watch sharp we get many pastors amen yeah many pastors you, 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 you don't get away from Babylon so easily <laughs> because the stain of Babylon is contaminating it's like the disease that follows you and you have to battle hard to keep get away from that disease so this is what we are reading here we are reading what Babylon looks like so we go back to Revelation um, chapter 17 yes verse 5 now this is the verse that I want to spend a little time with you and upon her forehead was the name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration it, it the word should not be admiration it should be amazement the, <laughs> we don't admire that see great amazement um, this is why I tell you you have to read the Bible in the spirit so that you you don't say well the Bible says admiration so it is admiration you go to the Greek and you find out that the Greek is telling you something else it's telling you not admiration but amazement and wonder and the angel said unto me wherefore didst thou marvel I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her which hath the seven heads and ten horns the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is come on now let's get that straight the beast was but it was slain the beast was but it was slain so it was not but it is for 
that is going to rise up again in our time to face us. This is what we are looking at. We are looking at a beast system. Now, when God talks about beast, I want you to understand what he means. God made the beast. God made the beast. Therefore, he's not talking about natural beasts. He's talking about the mind of the beast. When a man, a man is spirit, soul, and body. There were some um, transparencies here. Man is spirit, soul, and body. And when man... Man is spirit, soul, body. Three parts dwelling in three different realms. Do you understand that? You can be in heaven, you can be on earth, at the same time, Jesus Christ, standing before the brethren, he said, the Son of Man which is in heaven. He was in heaven while he was here, standing here. You can be in heavenly places, walking with Christ, and you are still here. Hallelujah. So you are a tripartite being, made after the image of God. You are spirit, soul, body. God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Same one person, but you are moving upon three different dimensions. Your spirit moves in a dimension that is highest. And the frequency of the spirit is higher than anything else on earth. But... God's plan is that he should meet you spirit to spirit. And therefore the Holy Ghost should meet you. And when you meet the Holy Ghost, you have the Christ and you have the Father. So the man that has the Holy Ghost in his spirit. He has Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in his spirit. But God's will is that this Holy Ghost should move from your spirit into your soul. So that you should have Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in your soulish realm and what happens to the soul when it is pervaded and invaded by the power of God what happens to it it lives it raptures hallelujah <laughs> amen and so this is a rapture amen. that the spirit of God will be allowed to break through all the barriers of the soul, the bars, the gates, the objections, and burst in spirit to spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. One spiritual realm moving into the other spiritual realm, lifting that realm into the heavenlies. So that sometimes... You will be talking to me, and you will be seeing a vision at the same time. Hallelujah. You, you will be in the natural, and yet you are in the spiritual, because God gives you a vision. Open your eyes to the heavenlies, and you see heavenly things. Hallelujah. Not with your natural eyes, but with your spiritual eyes. Amen. Many of us 
who are experienced, we have gone through these things. We have seen it. We have walked in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. We know what it is to be in heaven and be on earth at the same time. All right. Now, this plan of God, do you think that's where God wants to stop? Ha, ha, ha. When God gets into the soul, God takes over the body. God's will, God's perfect will, is that this body should behave like a spirit. Hallelujah. Huh? You want to have a, a scripture for that? In Romans 8, he said that the human beings we are, we groan and travail in pain to be released. Amen. And that when we are released, it is the redemption of the body. Amen. Your body is alien to heaven. Your body is not a heavenly being. Your body is a physical, natural earth thing. But God says he's going to change it. Change your natural bodies. Physical people sitting here, you will be in the heavenlies. Do you know anybody who is in the heavenlies with his body? Yes, sir. Name me one person. Enoch, one more, one more, one more, one more. <laughs> the million of, of saints that rose up with Jesus and are in there with him, yet imperfect, yet imperfect. For the will of God is that when this thing is birthed, it should tackle the devil, bind him, put him into the pit, and that will be the end of him. And that is the will of God. Sin would be abolished. Now for us, sin is the norm. But that time, sin will be incidental. If it ever raises its head. God is saying, I mean not for us, but for those who are not saved. Even in the millennium, this same millennium in which we are. We are going to have bodies, holy bodies walking up and down the earth. That are like the body of Jesus Christ. We won't put any burden on the earth. We won't have to eat the food of the earth. Hallelujah. We'll be feeding from the heavenlies. So, now I want you to question this. If, if people don't question what I'm saying, I just believe they don't understand me. Because I'm not saying half of what I could be saying. So if you don't question, you really don't understand me. So let us go on a little bit more. Um, I, I deviated from, from where? Revelation 17. Um, to give you that, yes. No, we, 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 no, I touched Romans 8, but we are at v verse 5. The names of blasphemy. Now, we are guilty. We as a people, as a church, we are guilty of names of blasphemy because we still call people reverend. Now, let us take the first name of blasphemy, Reverend Dr. So-and-so. You know anybody like that? All right. Reverend, turn with me. Turn your Bibles with me to... Yes. Ninth verse. Somebody read that for me. Get that the mic. Holy and reverend is his name. 
we need the mark. It needs to go into the system. You are always reading it out of your mind. <laughs> Holy and reverend is his name. Um, Papa Paul, you have the interlinear, sir? Yeah, there Let's is. Listen. He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The word in the Hebrew is Y H V H. We pronounce it Yahweh. How does it spell now? Y A W E Y. That might not be perfect, anyhow. Well, it's pronounced Yahweh. We call it Jehovah. Now, how would you like me to call you Jehovah, Brother John? <laughs> Jehovah John Imig. <laughs> oh, thank you, Brother. That's not good at all. You, you wouldn't like that, eh? But suppose I said Reverend John Imig. Uh, yes, that, that, you see, the point is, they put it in um, English, and they make it look nice. And they, 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 they give you that title when you go to the seminary. And they call you reverend. And it's one of the names of blasphemy, which God said we must not call anybody by. Another name of blasphemy. Let's take the most blatant one, the most awful one, Pope. Pope, as I tell you, Pope means Father, Matthew. Uh, you, you, March of 24, 8? I was going to take March of 20. Uh, no, it's not 24, 8. Oh, oh, yeah, it's March of 23. Uh, read that for me, somebody. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Um, that um, is what verse? Chapter 23 of Matthew, verse 9. 23, verse 9. We might as well read verse 8 also. Verse 8 also. Verse 8. Huh? But be not but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Verse 10, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Okay. So then doctor then is master. Doctor or doctor. Um, I'm not talking about you, uh, Sister Florence. Where is she? You're all right. I'll call you doctor anytime. <laughs> because a medical doctor, that's not what God is talking about. God is talking about a man who says he's a spiritual doctor. <laughs> I, I, it, it amazes me. You know, sometimes I used to look at the TBN and um, I, I would see some men there who 
really have some substance. God gave them something. And I was so ashamed of them. Every single one of them is now doctor so-and-so. Doctor this and doctor that and doctor that. Um, my son came the other day to tell me that um, we had two ministers down in the, in the church down in Florida. And he said they ran up the road as mister and they came back down as doctor. <laughs> <laughs> they went up and bought a doctorate. You know you can buy it very easily. You can get a doctorate too easily. $10 on the internet. Oh, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> you mean it's gone to that? Oh, God. <laughs> Brethren, don't call them doctor. Because if you do, you are also blaspheming. Don't call a man reverend, because if you do, you are also blaspheming. Amen. The yeah. word doctor, it, I believe it comes from didaskalos. Brother Martin, I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I believe so. Yeah. Anyhow, you can go into it, and if I'm wrong, you just tell everybody I'm wrong. Promise me? All right. I... Don't mind being wrong. For if I'm wrong, I want to be right. <laughs> uh, my whole idea that I live to be right. I want to be right. And when I'm wrong, I'm feeling bad about it. And if anybody can straighten me up, I'm so happy. Yes, brother. I did, I did find, uh, no, get the uh, get, get, get the. Oh. Uh, I did find in uh, Psalm uh, 111, verse 9, it's Yare, Y-A-R-E, pronounced Yare, yeah. and it's uh, a primary root, uh, meaning terrible, dreadful, reverence, fearful, to fear, revere, be afraid, to fear, be afraid, to stand in awe of, to fear, to reverence, honor, respect, and it goes on. Thank you, brother. Yes, that, that, that is what the apologists put there. <laughs> the, the whole idea that the root of it is God, Yahweh. You see, the root of it is God. I remember uh, preaching in, in, in Tulsa, and there was a Hebrew professor in the, in the, bar, in the, um, in the meeting, and he got up and challenged me and said, it's not exactly right. I said, well, tell me what is the root of it. And he finally sat down and said, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Amen. The, the whole idea is to put a man so high, dreadful, terrible, marvelous, wonderful. The reverend so-and-so is a, is a dreadful, terrible, marvelous, wonderful person. Amen. I say he's a sinner. You, you, you will forgive me for being plain. Most people, I tell you what, when I first joined the church, contrary to God's will, joined the church contrary to God's will, but believing that the people who brought messages from God to me were right, and they put me through their course of teaching, and I came out on the other side, they gave me Reverend Cecil J. Dutzel. And I, young and foolish, went and printed up some cards. <laughs> you have ever seen a card mark Reverend Cecil J. Dutzel? You didn't see it because it never went out. <laughs> I printed the cards, took them in. And God said to me, what is that? <laughs> yes. I, 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 <laughs> I said, well, you know. <laughs> it's a title I get from going to the Bible school. <laughs> he said, look it up. He didn't tell me. He just said, look it up. 
I went and I looked it up and then I repented. And I repented of the cards and I destroyed them right away. Brethren, if you participate in this thing, you are part of the blasphemy. Remember that the woman had the names of blasphemy written on her forehead. Yeah. You know, I, I tackled one person one day and said, well, doctor, I took him to the Bible, showed him. He said, well, I want you to know, I work for this. And I, this is what I work for and I received it. And I'm going to use it. All right. So I have nothing to do with a doctor of theology. For as far as I'm concerned, he's a babe. He doesn't know God. He doesn't know theology. Bring him before any Holy Ghost anointed person who knows God and he withers. I was preaching in Springfield, Missouri, in Bill Britton's church. And this brother, who is the Hebrew and Greek master at the college there, the, um, the Assembly of God College, he came to the meeting, invited by some friends. Thank you. And the friend, he, um, he said to me, that he, he, he said to me, what kind of a person you are? He said, I, I, I enjoyed the word so well, but how on earth could you ever believe in the rapture? He, he, I mean, say that the, the rapture is not right. He said, so I played with him a little. Because when I was going to meet him that night, oh, Barbara is there smiling. <laughs> she was there. <laughs> yes. He, he, said, he said to me, um, how could you ever believe a thing like this? Um, I said, well, you see, when I was going to meet him, God said to me, turn back, pick up all your Greek and Hebrew books, put them in your car. So I put them in the car and took them. And I said to him, well, um, could you show me in the Bible where the rapture is? And he said, well, I, I don't have a, a, a Greek text here. I said, well, I have them in the car. So I brought them and gave them to him. And I, I, he just read it like water, you know. <laughs> read it like water. And then he said, there it is, rapture, taken away. He was so careless in dealing with me that he took the worst passage he could ever take. It took the worst passage in the whole Bible. Matthew 24, verse 38, it started. As it was with Noah, you know, so shall it be, and so on, so too shall be in the bed one day. And all those passages was talking of taking and away in destruction rather than taking and away in a rapture. And he, and when I said to him, well, brother, could you tell me what's the meaning of that word? You know, paralambate and so on. And I went down... And he read it, and when he read it, he got serious. He knitted his brow, and the tears began to run down his eyes. And he said, oh, God. He said, for years I've taught this. My professor taught me. I taught this, and I never thought of it. Never thought of it. This definitely is not a rapture. Anyhow, the professors follow what they are taught. You'll be shocked to know that there's a mystique in the classroom that the average student does not query what his professor says. He just goes right along with it and begins to teach it. Well, the names of blasphemy. Um, we are talking about the names that are in the church that are blasphemy, blasphemous. Let us deal with Bishop. Bishop. is Latin. <laughs> Anytime they want to teach you a false doctrine, they give you Latin. 
Oh, yeah. If they dare go to the Greek or the Hebrew, it's going to correct them. Therefore, they teach you, they, they put a Latin word in. So, therefore, we go to chapter 1 Timothy, chapter 3. 1 Timothy, chapter 3. And we read. This is a true saying. If a man desires, you have an interlinear, anybody? If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. The first wrong word that is there, not in the Bible, is the office. It's the office. There is no such office in God. In divine order, there is no such office. The word office is not in the Bible. Somebody puts it in there. I want somebody to say, you know, you're wrong. But I'm sure you can't. Hang on to that. Oh, yes. The scriptures would eat you alive. There is no such word. No such word. Search your concordance, search your Bible all over. you never find the word office. Because office is speaking of hierarchy. And Jesus Christ says there should be no hierarchy in the church. Let me find that for you. Get back to 20th chapter of Matthew, somebody, please. And read for me where Jesus said there should be no hierarchy in the church. There should be no clergy and laity. There are no clergy. Clergy is another blasphemous name. I went to the hospital and I couldn't find a parking. And the only parking was available was the parking for the clergy. And I crept in there hoping that nobody would see me. <laughs> Amen. Somebody going to read for me? Uh, that interlinear is going to tell you the truth. There's no word office there. Read it for me, please. Um, there's a mic. Where's the mic? Okay. Faithful is the word. If anyone reaches out to overseer ship, he desires a good work. All right. And then verse 2, then the overseer must be blameless, husband of one wife, and so on. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if anyone desires to be in a position to take care of God's sheep, overseer ship, they call it, um, um, it, they still make it into a noun, but it's not a noun in, 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 in the Greek. I, I, I believe it's not a noun. Um, it, it must be a verb or something like that. But brother is going to correct all this when he comes up. <laughs> I'm setting you up, brother. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Now, overseer, what does the Bible say about the overseer? Now, the word is what? Episcopas? Is it? Okay, episcope, episcopas. All right, let's look for that word Episcopus again. So you turn to the 20th chapter of Acts. And Paul uses the word here uh, as pertaining to the elders. <laughs> because when... God said to Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. He was giving him a direction as to what God wants the elder to do. And when, verse 18, and when they were come to him, I'm sorry, now let's start from, start from verse 17. And from Miletus, is, is sent to Ephesus and called who? The elders 
of the church. Right? Look down at verse 28. He is talking now to the elders of the church. He said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. <laughs> Let me just touch on a little peculiarity there. He said the Holy Ghost had made you overseers which he, the Holy Ghost, had purchased with his own blood. <laughs> Amen. There's no difference between the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ. Amen. There are one. You could say God purchased with his blood. You could say Jesus purchased with his blood. And you could say the Holy Ghost purchased with his blood. Praise be to God. Well, now, so we know what overseers are then. So let's go back to, um, where were we? Mm. we? We were in First Timothy um, 3, 3. Okay. Now, so then the, the, the next one I should write here is... Um, Name of blasphemy. Um, what did I call it? What, what, uh, um, bishop. Bishop. That is, where did I find it? Overseer. Good. Now let's go on. The next name of blasphemy <laughs> is deacon. Huh? Do you realize that there's nothing in the Bible named deacon? Hmm? Uh, uh, what verse is it? What verse is it? Eight. The word in the Greek is diakonon. That word diakonon means servant. Um, let's look at it where Jesus spoke the word. Turn around to back to Matthew 20. You're getting a real Bible exercise today. It's best to put a marker in it. Turn around to Matthew 20. And Jesus speaking to his disciples, telling them there's no hierarchy in the church whereas they thought there was, they wanted to have dominion over the people of God. And God said, no, it is only in the world that the rulers of the world, verse 25, have dominion over the people of God. And um, um, Keta, what is it, brother? The dominion, dominion is katak, cupio, something like katak. Anyhow, the the um, he said, but it shall not be so among you. Verse twenty-six. But whosoever will be great among you. Let him be your servant. You know what they did? They translated it into King James and call it minister. <laughs> um, why do you think they call it minister? Because in Latin, 
minister his servant. <laughs> and they changed the word. You could talk about etymological change. That over the moment the church came in, the church changed some of the Latin words to be church words. And in church, when you say minister, you mean the man with the collar who is at the head ruling everybody. In the world, when you said minister in Latin, you meant the man who is sweeping the, the gardener, the, the worker, the servant. You follow what I'm saying? So they changed the word and brought it into the scripture. And they said, they call it minister. If they had no ulterior motives, they would have translated like they translated wrong and said deacon. <laughs> but you see, they have, a, they have an ulterior motive. So that in one place they call it deacon, diaconon is deacon. In another place, diaconon is minister. And in another place, diaconon is servant. <laughs> you see? So if, unless you can search your Bible and go from place to place and see the wickedness that they have been doing to try to deceive the people, you will not know the depths of iniquity that we are dealing with. Now, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. You see that? the same word, but they change now the word dolos, which is slave, to servant. In order to suit the other word, they, they couldn't call that servant, servant. They call it servant. Now they call this one servant, where it is really slave. Are you with me? It's really slave. And I'm not deceiving you. You can go to your Greek, take a note of it, grab one of these Greek. We have a lot of, um, uh, uh, with some of these here. Grab it and look it up for yourself. Don't take what I say, and then when you are confronted, you say, Brother Dutil say. You have to say, Strong say so, or the dictionary say so. Are you with me? <laughs> Amen. Now, we go back. We, we have a long way to go back. Eh? We have to go back to. Um, we, we finished with Timothy now. But I, I want you to understand that there's no such thing as a deacon. He's a servant of the church. And a servant of the church, he, he, you, you have a, a lesser degree of servantship and a higher degree of servantship. In other words, you have a servant that labors in the word. And you have a servant that could sweep the floor. But they are both servants of God. And God is going to require them alike. We go right back to Revelation. I have the feeling that you, you, you're losing your sharpness. Huh? You're not as sharp as, as when I started out. You couldn't be hungry yet. <laughs> yes. G get him the mic there for me. <laughs> I just thought I'd bring up the point that there were servants, uh, Stephen, in the book of Acts, that they were appointed to a certain ministry of serving, and uh, they were appointed to it, and, um, but it was indeed serving, and there was, what, seven of them? Yes. And, and, but their ministry was a humble ministry. Yes, they were, they were appointed even to serve were, tables. Even though they were mighty men of God. But because, because, because Stephen preached such a powerful word, they called him a deacon. The church called him a deacon. There's no such thing. God never told you Stephen was a deacon. He was a deacon and a servant. Yes. The... Um, Diakonos comes from the Greek word diako, which means one that runs errands. Yeah. To run errands is diako. Yes, yeah, so that's mailman. the root. Right. It's just a guy that. George. Yeah. <laughs> diako. 
Amen. Yes, we go back then to Revelation. We have a, 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 a wonderful picture here looking at. And I saw the woman, verse 6, okay, chapter 17, verse 6. Ah, amen. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great wonder. <laughs> Not admiration. Now, can you, can, can remember now, this was written by John at a period of time when they were persecuting the church, the, the, um, the, Roman, the Roman church, the Roman government itself. As a matter of fact, um, a lot of Jews were part of that Roman system. But the Roman system was persecuting the church. And it is for the persecution of the church that John was put in the Isle of Patmos. And he had this vision. And he saw what the, the Catholic system was going to do, um, or the Roman system was going to do with the church of God. With the saints, bloody with the saints. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman that, and the beast that carried her. Seven heads and ten horns. Remember, that's where we branched off to look at what the red dragon was. The beast that thou sawest was and is not an instant shall come from the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is, and here is a man which had wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. I tell you what, we have two things going here. We have two things going here. We had better not go into this one any deeper and just finish the blasphemy. Let's finish the blasphemy and we finish there and then we go into classes. All right? The blasphemy, we have here a deacon. Now we have reverend, deacon. Then we have, um, oh, sorry, I have the wrong pen here. We have pastor. pastor and that is Ephesians 4 11 and this is one of the wickedest things that they did that they took out the word shepherd and they put in pastor but I believe and had they, had they known that knowledge would increase, they would not have put it in where they put it because they put it in the wrong place. Look with me at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. When Samson went to Timnah to seek a wife, and he found the wife, he left the wife in the charge of some men. And they called them in those days the companions. In our days, we would call them best men. Uh, now, we only have one best man, but 
in, in their time, they would have a several men that would protect the bride until the groom comes back. But the groom must go away, and the bride must be trained to be a wife, and she must be coached to be a wife until the bride comes back in two years to take his bride, until the groom comes back in two years to take his bride. Now, it so happens that the whole thing matches the gospel story of Jesus Christ going away for 2,000 years and coming back for after 2,000 years to take his bride, of the good Samaritan going away and paying two pence to come back and take his bride and say, whatever is more, I will pay it. That means that he was going to stay a little bit over 2,000 years. You hear me? So we are past the 2,000 year mark and we are in the period of time when Jesus Christ must come back because the money has run out that he gave the innkeeper. Now, all right, so we have the companions in the place of, 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 uh, of um, Samson and in the place of the Good Samaritan, we have the innkeeper. Now, the companions that Jesus left the bride with is the ministry of the church. The ministry of the church was given the charge. Jesus Christ said to, um, Paul said to the elders, he said, take care, take heed that you take care of the church which the Holy Ghost has set you as overseers over. Right? Now, this then is where we are. The companions of Samson decided to take the bride for themselves. The ministry of today take the church as their property. You talk to most ministers and say, my church, my people, my congregation. They take the church for themselves. They take the people of God who like sheep, follow them, and they feed them on all the trash. Because if they feed them on the true bread, they will not follow them. You understand where we are. If the true bread is delivered from the pulpit, then the brethren will not follow the leaders. That's why we have so few people. Amen. I have preached out more churches than any man that you know. Oh, yes. There was a time when Mavis and I went through America and we would plant four or five churches every month. We never stopped. We kept going from place to place. I mean, no wonder the poor woman is worn out. Amen. I just pray to God to have mercy upon her, strengthen her. You know, she couldn't make it this morning. She was so, her stomach all night, pain, suffering, and she, she just couldn't make it. But I am saying to you, brethren, that the... The, 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 the God left the church to the ministry which he had ordained. He ordained 12 men and he left them first. And those men, he said, you go and you get other men and teach them the truth and let the truth go on. But the whole thing got so corrupted by human nature and by satanic incursion that they have taken over the church and the church now is a man thing. It's a thing that owned by men and women. Own it. And it became, make them rich. I know multi-millionaire preachers, multi-millionaires. The richest organization on earth is the church. The Roman Catholic Church is richer than any other organization on earth. They alone lend the, 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 the um, government of the United States enough money to run the whole Vietnam War. It was the, the Bank of America which belongs to the Catholic Church. So, I'm, I'm saying all this that you might understand how accurate 
the word of God is. Now, they come here now and they want to change the Bible. And they said here, the Bible says, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far up far above the heavens and he that he might fill all things and he said he left he, he and he gave because he ascended up into the heavenlies he gave some apostles apostles people that are sent of god sent of god called trained you know, carried through a training process of, of suffering. Yes, yes, of suffering and sent. Amen. Amen. You, you yes. trace the 12 apostles. Trace them. I went down into India and there I saw the place where, where um, Philip, the evangelist, where he landed at Nagakoil and where Philip landed the, um, the the Catholic Church built a shrine <laughs> amen and every religion on earth build up their shrines all around you want to see it it is the wickedest place on earth amen Go, George you, you bear me witness yes sir Yes, and the, um, when will the Indian brother get here? Uh, the 10th. The 10th, okay. So we have a, a few representatives from India coming. But this, this um, place, this man, he preached there in that area, and they decided to kill him. And he fled to Madras. And they followed him. And they caught him on top of a hill. And they killed him right there. And they built a shrine again. The Catholic Church built a shrine. Call it Thomas. I said Philip. It's Thomas. Thomas. The same man that pushed his hand in the side of Jesus. Amen. He was martyred in India. That means to say the apostles went all over the world. Apostles that were appointed, anointed, and sent. Amen. 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 Now, why did the church change? Why did the church system change from apostles and prophets and evangelists and shepherds and teachers to Pastor, Pope, Bishop, Doctor. Do you know why? Because they know that apostles can only be appointed by God. They know that prophets cannot be appointed by man. You know? They know you can't say, I appoint you a prophet. You cannot appoint a prophet. You cannot appoint an apostle. You cannot appoint a God-sent evangelist because he must be sent of God to evangelize what God, the apostle, gave him. Don't you understand? The apostle receives from God and the apostle gave it to them. The reason why I'm here is because Jesus Christ himself came into my room, Amen. talked to me man to man for seven months. He, he communed with me every day. And he sent me. Amen. And he said, one day I'm going to send you to the United States. One day. I never went, never moved myself until 20 years after. Are you with me? 20 years after, he came to me and said, go now. Amen. When he said, go now, 
I had down in Montego Bay there and Water Lane, I had a school named the Northwestern Academy. I had 300 young people ready to go to college there and to take the examination for college. I had a farm down the street here, 25 miles down here at, at, at um, the, the Maxfield Great House. That's, that's, that's what God gave us. Um, that's where the young men, my, my, my young men grew up. And the, um, he said, go. He said, go. I had to leave the pigs and the chickens and the, 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 um, the school because God said, my sheep, I want you to go for my sheep. 20 years. 20 years of suffering in this land is not like 20 years of suffering in America. <laughs> we suffer hunger. We walk these streets sometimes without soul and our shoes. I remember the asphalt burning the daylights out of me. I'm still preaching the gospel. And God did that to train me. When I got to America, I couldn't be deceived by anybody wanting to give me food to eat. Because we go for days without eating and still preach. <laughs> we didn't care about where we were going to sleep the night we went. We never knew anybody in America. We just landed in Miami and said, God, take over. God took over. Amen. Amen. And so the, 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 the story I'm telling you is to bring you to an understanding what an apostolic calling is. It's not a joke. It's not fun. Somebody get up and say he's an apostle. God has to call you, train you, carry you through the fire. Somebody asked about the baptism of fire. Carry you through the fire and bring you out. And the first thing happened is the church come against me. Amen? Going to a church, hear the voice of God as plain as I hear you. And the voice of God said, my house is a house of prayer. And I jump up and said, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. <laughs> Go into their house and call them thief. But the spirit of the thief has taken over that church. Amen. Yes, the spirit of the thief has taken over the churches in this land. And God wants to deliver the churches of the world. Amen. We have... Um, missionary meeting. Call the people from everywhere. We're going to have a missionary meeting. And we have singing and praying and praising and recitations and whatever. And we are raising money for the missionaries. There are some young men coming out of, of, of the Bible school. And these young men needed money to go. Because they were ready, man, chomping at the bits to go win souls for Christ. It was on that level, right? All right, we raised money. I said to them, brethren, according to my statistics, every dollar that we give these young men who preach, they have brought in a soul. And therefore, if you give a dollar today, you will be blessed by one soul from these young preachers that we are sending out. I see men come up. I see, I see a, 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 a farmer comes up and he, he pulls his little trade bag with his money and he says, so many souls. And it touched my heart. That money I'm afraid of, I wouldn't touch it with a long stick because it's his blood. The blood of the people poured out to save souls. When we got into the back counting the money, they begin to divide it up. The bishop was there and began to divide. I said, you're crazy. I said, I told those people, this money is going to the, 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 the ministry, the young men, the evangelists who we are sending to preach. He said, ah, child, you're, you're too naive. You're too naive. You're too naive. They, they just divide up the money among them and laughed at me. Ha! Thieves! Yeah. The spirit of the thief! Yeah. 
has taken over the church, has taken over the Christian. There are greater thieves and robbers as those who hold up the banks. Baba Shua. Yola ma shukuru bukaya. My God. And so, the Lord says that he will appoint evangelists. Some of you sitting here before me are going to be going out as evangelists because God sent you. Not because we sent you. We will be behind you. Like if my foot go out there, the rest of me is behind it. Amen. My hand goes out here, the rest of me is behind it. So we will be behind you. We will be with you. But we are not going to send you. No, my teacher God. God is going to send his people. You are the arms of God that God's going to send for. Begin to look to him and say, God, what shall I do? We're going to have a consecration meeting here. And we're going to have people, some of you, coming and consecrating your lives before God and making a covenant before God. Believe you me, your life won't be yours anymore. You take it back and God will zap you. So you have to think well before you do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, the prophets, the apostles, now the prophets, the prophets are those who are anointing with prophecy. Now all of you, remember now, when the fivefold ministry minister to you, all of you have a part of the ministry. But some will come forth as prophet, some will come forth as apostle, some will come forth as evangelist, some will come forth as shepherds. Amen. As shepherds. And some will come forth as teachers. Now, you are not going to come forth as a pastor. Amen. The blasphemous ministry. Ah, Kutu. The blasphemous ministry that is called pastor is a ministry that takes charge of the church and becomes the boss. God has no boss in his church. Jesus Christ must rule the church. And the church must walk under the rulership of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, there are elders. And you pay respect to elders. And you pay respect to those, you pay respect to the ministry. Someone gets up and prophesy, you pay respect to the prophecy. But you don't tell me ha, that you want to be the head honcho in a church and nothing move unless they ask your permission. Hmm? Nothing moves unless they ask your permission because you are the boss. You own everything. If a man doesn't please you, 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 you get rid of him, you excommunicate him, and you know there's a diabolical excommunication, that you just whisper something about him. <laughs> just whisper and let the diabolos have their way, the devil have their way, and they kill him. He has to leave that church. <laughs> Amen. How about Yes, well, the next one is um, the, the one here we have as pastor. And you should all circle that in your Bible and put it there. Remember now, the King James Version of the Bible is the best version we have. It's the best version. Don't you ever think because we find these um, mistakes in the King James that you're going to say, it's not good. It's the best one. The others are horrible. If we ever tell you what is in them, you'd be shocked. You see? So, the King James Version. I threw away all others, and I cling to the King James Version. So, you, you, the, it has here pastor. You circle the pastor, and you put shepherd. Yes, Pamain is shepherd. 
it's not pastor and um, teachers. Um, we, we could go a little further, but I'm going to stop here now. And we have um, going into classes. Excuse me for interrupting. I, I just wanted to add that um, something that I started sensing, it could be just for me, but I, I feel to share it, and that is there is, um, and I was feeling it before, and I felt it yesterday, and again, this could be just for me, so if anybody wants to receive it, just uh, test the word, and that is that we are not to fear to ask questions, and I believe that that may be uh, something that I'm going through maybe because of all the things that I came out of. But I really felt that he's been asking, ask questions. And if there's anybody here that's maybe holding back because your question may seem dumb or, or, or irrelevant, but to you it isn't. Because I believe that after this, after this conference, if, you're not, if the questions are not answered or you're not asked the questions, then I believe that Brother says is set free from because he wants to be vulnerable in, your, in the questions that we all have because we all want to obtain that area of, um, of godliness in our lives. So uh, we all want to get there, but I, I just felt that we need to just be free. Be free to ask any question because a dumb question is not a dumb question when it comes to our lives concerning the spiritual. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> well, here's my, um, I mean, my wife and I, we just want to uh, just ask the, the this, this 2008 thing is, is I, I'll tell you, there's, there's a war came up. There, I'm sorry. Well, I don't want to stand in the front, but there's a war that came up, and I told my, uh, I went praying, I said, Lord, I do not want to go to Jamaica. I do not want to go to Jamaica because this 2008 thing scares the daylights out of me because I've heard so many dates being given and many fall away and I just said, no Lord, this is not for me because I never contacted, Brother says called me and David called me and says, so are you coming? And I never contacted him and says, no Lord, this is not, uh, it scares me. So my, <laughs> my thing is just to, to be able to, to uh, and I do question it. I do question this 2008 uh, thing. And I, and I maybe, if I can get a little bit more, or all of us, uh, but my, especially my wife and I, because of where we came out of, um, the clarification of 2008. Am I hearing that it's a 2008, or I may be hearing wrong, a 2008 of the return of Jesus? Or is it, what is it? I need a little more clarification. Well, I suppose that question is a lively one that everybody <laughs> wanted to hear. <laughs> Amen. Well, um, I, I was brought into salvation around 40, 47, 48, somewhere there. And the Spirit of God began to talk to me, as you know, I started out with talking with Jesus himself and um, he began to tell me somewhere in the year 1948 about destruction in the United States. I mean, I, am, I was terrified. Morning, noon and night, the spirit would be on me. I would see the destruction. I see what would happen in the cities. I see people running for their lives. I see people killing one another to get transportation to get away. And it was horror. And it was difficult to preach that kind of a horror. But it continued. And it continued so much that I had to beg God to kind of a ease off with telling me about it. Because I couldn't, I couldn't take any more of it. But I'm sorry afterwards that I did because he withdrew. And then, but every year he would come back and show me a little piece of it. And every year he would show me a little piece of it. 
And then it came to the point that we began to ask God about the tribulation. And as you know, one day in 1977, that is like 30 years after that. 40 and how much makes 70? 30, right? So from, from 47 to 77 would be 30 years, right? Am I right? I didn't know it was so much. <laughs> All right. So 30 years after, God came to me. I was plowing, uh, uh, doing the yard with the moor, and suddenly a heaviness came over me, and he said, go inside. I sat down on the bed and held my head down like this, and I saw a man coming through the door. It's broad daylight. This man was coming through the door, but I wouldn't lift up my head to look at him. I just felt if I lift up my head, I was going to spook him. And I, I really wanted to hear what he said. He had on a gartered feet, shoes. You know, the garters that cross like this, cross right down his foot, going down to the shoes. And it was like a slipper, you know, like what you'd call a um, sandal. And he came and stood right before me. And he pushed a piece of paper in my face like this. And I was struggling to read it because the paper was written from the top right down to the bottom. I couldn't read it. And he said, don't worry. You can't read that. He said, that is the past. He said, this is the tribulation. And when I looked at this paper, two lines were written at the top. So that means two years out of the tribulation was already gone. And he, so then the tribulation would be end in 2000, in 4008. But at that time, I thought the tribulation was seven years. You see, according to the teaching of the church, when I began to pray about it, God told me to look up 40. Any of you have the time, you go look up the number 40 in the Bible, and you'll see 40 right through the Bible, tribulation, 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 trial, tribulation. And when you get three times 40, you come to 120, and that is deliverance. Moses was 40 years of age when God called him. And he went out into the desert for 40 more years. And God sent him back with the children of Israel for 40 years, bring them back to the promised land. So then it is 40 years that the tribulation would last. And that is what God showed me. Again, I kept on praying for the tribulation is going to end in, two, in four, um, two, 2008. But a um, couple of years ago, I was there sitting down and I fall into a, a little doze. And this man came right up and he had on Levi's, as I told you. And he said, do you want to know when that there will about, you want to know about the great atomic war which will occur in the year 2008. Now, brethren, if the tribulation is going to end in the year 2008, and the destruction is going to be in the year 2008, and God has to stop the destruction, again, as the years went by, I asked him certain key questions. One of the questions was, um, how are you going to do it? You are going to stop. First of all, I said to him, Lord, it seems to me that man does not have the power to destroy your world. Man can't destroy this world. He said, sure they can. And that shocked me. I said, how? Oh. He turned me to the Bible. I went to Matthew 24, and somewhere around verse 21, 22, it says, but for the elect's sake, no flesh would be saved. 
That means they could make this a barren planet if they begin to let off all the atomic weapons that they have. But God said, but for the elect's sake. That means the elect are going to stop the destruction. Here again, I said, God, how are you going to do it? How is it going to work? And he, it took me many years again before he would answer me. And he said, the elect will come forth in Christ. Will come forth in Christ. That means they are going to kill the people of God. They're going to resurrect in two and a half days. They are going to stop the war. That's how I see it. So it's not a bad idea, Brother uh, Maurice. It's a good thing that's going to happen. Because the elect are going to stop the atomic bombs from, from finishing us off. Because if the nation's wrath really let loose, if God doesn't intervene, no flesh would be left alive. They would poison the whole earth. The atmosphere would be poisoned. Where is the runner? Take it easy now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brother Duciel, uh, for the purposes of everybody here on the tape, did you say 1977? Yes. 77 in two years had already passed? 1970. Did I say 77? You said 77, yes. 70. Um, and in 1970, you said two years had two already years passed? Two years already passed, yes. So that would make it 1968. 68. The start. The Yom Kippur War. The Yom Kippur War. Israel had that seven day war in 68, right? Yes. So if it was 1968, that would put us, 40 years would put us 2008. Yeah. But you're saying it's shortened two years. He shortened it by two years. That's why he showed me the two, he didn't show me until the two lines were already written. Yeah. Right. It's not shortened by two years, it's 40 years. No, he said it's shortened by two years. Um, um, if he said it 1970 in 1970, he to, said 60, to, nine, to 2008, it's 38 years. Yes, sir, and I thought you said that he showed you there were two lines already written, yes. meaning two years had already happened of the tribulation. Yes, yes. I don't, I don't see the shortening then. Well, I if, see if that oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two years had already passed. Okay, so there were still the 40. The tribulation had been held back. So he cut off the two years at the beginning instead of at the end. And those two years were going to make a vast difference with the advance of technology. If that war continued for two years more, nothing would be left. All right, we, let us dismiss. One more question. All right, one more question, then we dismiss. No, Where is the runner? <laughs> you ran out of juice? I was wondering, you said that um, the uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and so on are appointed and anointed by God and sent by God, and you were trained by, through suffering. Does that mean that um, each of those five ministries, or is it just the apostles that are trained by suffering? Or, you know, what can we expect Yes, they, they, they go through suffering. It is a, a necessary fire that they must go through, just like how Paul went through that suffering. All right, we, we, we'll close here. Let, let us just bless the food. I don't see it, but we can bless it. Father, we just thank you for your presence with us, your guiding hand. 
your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us all safely. We pray that you might equip us with ears to hear and hearts to understand. Sanctify the food, Lord God, and bless it to our bodies. In the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, God.